the camera very often, and when she is, she's shy, so. Harper Lynn, come here! Come here, hurry, hurry, hurry! Hurry, come here! Look at this! Can you say hi to everybody? Hi! <laughs> Sticking the tongue out, already getting shy? Yeah, you little... Oh, you're not shy? No! Oh, you're not? We'll talk to him! No! Oh, okay. Yeah! Oh! What up, guys, and welcome back to another one! That is my daughter, Harper. You guys haven't seen her in forever. She's, she's growing way, way, way too fast. But I also have a little boy by the name of Bodie. He's uh, almost one and a half. And this video is just about my family and, and about me and, and, and about the journey of the YouTube channel and just my life and how it's grown into duck hunting and waterfowl hunting in specific and how I ended up here with y'all. I get questions from y'all all the time asking, Bobby, how old were you when you shot your first duck? How old were you when you started duck hunting? How old were you? You know what I mean. So it's been one year, one full year that I have been a full-time YouTuber and I can say that this is the best job I've ever had in my life. This is not a job. That's why I pursued YouTube, because I didn't want a job anymore. I wanted to do my own thing, and today we're going to go over how I got to the point of where we are today. The whole story, because like I said, we're out of year. It's been one year being full-time on YouTube. The channel's actually two years old, but my story is extremely relatable to y'all. It, it is... It is very relatable. It's, it's nothing different, nothing special. Um, it's probably a lot like a lot of your stories. So I just want to make this video and show you all that um, I'm not a great shooter because I was born gifted or I'm not a great hunter because I was hunting by the age of five and blowing a call by the age of seven, you know what I mean? Uh, I am not the best out there. It's because I do it so much why we have good luck. It's actually pretty chilly. I think it's like 45 degrees finally. So we're actually going to go in the shop, light a little fire, and have us a chat. Check out the duck's olive hoodies. Oh my goodness, finally. And then I know I've showed y'all before, but these waiter sweats, they're thermal. They're thick. They're awesome. The bottoms are cuffed, so they don't slide up in your waders. You don't have to use those weird little ankle cuff things. I'll link both of these products in the description below. You need to go check them out. But let's get this darn fire going here because it is a hair bit chilly in here. Let me tell y'all. What? Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, man. Feels like I haven't sat in this chair forever. As all of my long-term subscribers here know, we have spent a lot of time in the old flower chair and in front of the old fireplace. I've always done a ton of how-to videos here and we need to get them back going, all the Foul Fridays, and that's kind of why this video is going up on a Friday because I really miss the Foul Fridays and giving you guys information. So this is how we might start them back up. But I want to just jump into this. We're going to start from my childhood of how just hunting came along and then how it progressed into what it is now. So, so, I got my first uh, gun, which was a papoose it was a, a little 22 papoose and i still actually have that gun it's over at my parents house in a big old safe and it's it's safe obviously and then my second gun was a 410 uh, a lot of you guys have seen me use that on the solo dove hunt it's that bolt action stevens model and that was my first gun i did any type of wing shooting with so the first hunting i ever did i did at the age of probably eight years old nine years old and we went quail and pheasant hunting. Now, um, this wasn't something we did a lot. We didn't go hunting a bunch. It was me and my stepdad. My stepdad is uh, the one that actually got me into hunting and guns. He's the one that taught me gun safety. Big, big, big gun safety guy. Which is great because that's what I'm all about on the channel. Being safe with our weapons. We all have to think about each other being around us. We have lives around us. We got to be safe. You know what I'm talking about. We probably went uh, all of maybe six or eight times. And then when I got into high school, I kind of lost hunting for a little bit. I lost hunting through uh, middle school, seventh and eighth grade, uh, freshman year, junior year even. All that time I got into skateboarding really heavy, which I'm glad because it built me into who I am today. And that's why I like this camera. It's probably because of skateboarding videos. So if you all know what I'm talking about, how they edit them up really well, 
I used to watch a ton of those. And that's what truly got me interested in photography and filmmaking was skateboard videos. If any of y'all ever skated, you know, you know what to do. Drop a comment down below because I'm a huge skateboarder and I love it. I haven't done it probably in, I haven't been on a board probably in two years, but uh, I do love it. So yeah, then we fast forward a little bit until I actually got back into hunting and that's when me and my best friend Wade, y'all have met him a ton here on the channel, we do a lot of the big goose hunts together, he has the enclosed trailer, we met. And, and right when we met, we hit it off, and we just started hunting together. We started hunting dove. That was the first thing. And then not long after that, it was within that first year of dove hunting, we automatically started duck hunting. Our buddy Heath got us into duck hunting. He took us on a river hunt, and that first river hunt was amazing. It blew my mind, and uh, I had no idea how to duck hunt. I didn't know what waders were. I didn't... I had never even held a duck call in my hand. This was probably at the age of, I'm guessing, 17. Yeah, probably 17 when I went on my first duck hunt. So that right there just shows you guys I have not been doing this my entire life. Now I've been, now at this time and day, I've been doing it, you know, 14, 14 15 years now. Solid, never stopped. Uh, when I found duck hunting that day, I loved it. We had a group of green heads uh, on the river. We All we did was just sit on the bank. I had coveralls on, no waders, no call. Heath was the only one. There were three of us. Heath was the only one that knew how to call ducks. And the first time we pulled up and smoked all three of them, I, I could not believe that we just sat in one spot and birds came to us and we shot them. Uh, that's why a lot of us fall in love with duck hunting is because you don't have to go walk miles upon miles for pheasants and quail. You scout, you find the birds, and you sit up on them the next morning. And it just blew my mind, you know. So, fast forward a little more. For the next three years, probably, that's what we did. Us three, we all duck hunted all the time. We worked on a farm together, and that's what we did. We were always in the country. Uh, we were hard at it all the time, just hard-pressed to duck hunt. And then the next year is probably our third or fourth year right in there is when Wade actually went out on a limb, coughed up his own change and started buying his own goose decoys that we were using. And what we used was an open single axle trailer and we would just stuff all the decoys on there and then cover the whole thing with a tarp and strap it down. And we'd pull it in the garage and out of the garage. We didn't have an enclosed trailer or nothing like that. And uh, Wade, he, he really he has supported, you know, just me learning how to duck hunt, learning how to goose hunt. We've done it together. We started together, and uh, that's why Wade and I are so close with this waterfowl, you know. We've just been doing it together for so long. So we keep fast forwarding, and it took a little bit for, to, for us to learn how to scout and start have, having better luck, especially at goose hunting. Goose hunting is a different game. You just don't go sit up on a river randomly or go to a public marsh and crack into the geese very well. So we did a ton of public duck hunting, you know, that's what we really got good at and that's why I love public duck hunting and, and providing it for you guys because that's what you guys do a lot and I love stepping back from the big goose hunts and getting back on the public marshes and, and just teaching you guys a thing or two, what you may or may not know. Uh, but so, uh, we started having really good goose hunts because Wade learned how to scout and then he taught me to ha how to scout and so we started finding fields together. Wade got really, really good really fast. That's what Wade does. He, he's very good at anything very quickly. Not, not Bob. It was kind of weird me having to drive around in places I didn't know and I never felt really comfortable about scouting, but I always felt lost. You know what I mean? So one thing I can tell you guys with scouting Learn your area. Just drive around, learn your area, get it learned up. Don't be afraid to drive out on county roads and country roads. Get out there, know where you're at. Don't be afraid to go find them birds. So we started scouting much, much better, and we started hunting out of tree rows using full body goose decoys all the time. And we had really good luck around our area, and that's why we got hooked to goose hunting, was because we started building a group, and we had four or five guys that really wanted to hunt with us and help build uh, our decoy spreads and throw in money for blinds and whatnot. And so that's how we started acquiring a bunch of this stuff to be able to have these huge immaculate hunts. Well, we did that forever. You know, some people came and went, we lost some friends, we gained some friends. And uh, I can tell you now, I've gained a lot of great friends. Um, hunting, I can tell you guys, it's one of them things. It, it's like a soap opera for men. Uh, <laughs> 
when it comes to local fields and birds, people get upset. So um, don't let anybody ever walk on you or use you because you have decoys or, or anything like that. All the above, just don't get used. I, I think a lot of you know what I'm talking about, but that happened quite a bit. There were people that would come and go and use us for our decoys, and we quickly learned, like, okay, no more. This is ridiculous, you know. These people don't want to go scout. These people don't want to help. And, and I know I'm kind of being negative, but you got to kind of protect yourself. When you go out there and you scout and you spend hundreds of dollars of gas and thousands of dollars on decoys and getting permission or maybe paying the farmer, when people aren't helping, it'll upset you. So what I'm getting at is just build you guys a group and stick to that group. I know, I'm getting off course again. Fast forward probably 10 years. That's what we did. We, we goose hunted a bunch and, and we loved the river duck hunts. We started river duck hunting a bunch. The greenheads just love it down here on the river. So that's what we did forever. Now Wade started guiding and when Wade started guiding, things really changed. She started learning a bunch of new tactics and started learning all about wind and sitting up decoys and then he passed it on to me in the field. So a lot of this was learned because Wade went out and he learned how to guide and he went with these different clients and he took clients from out of state and he hunted with bigger and better hunters and learned from them and that's how this stuff is done. Always keep your eyes and ears open in the field and learn. Take in what you can and uh, never think you know too much because I'm still learning every single time I go out. So let's get to where we are today. The reason why I do this today, this YouTube channel right here, is because all those times we hunted, I was never the greatest caller. I was never the most accurate shooter. I never had the best ideas for decoy spreads. Um, so what happened was I kind of got sick of that. I, I really did. I got sick of not having the great ideas, not putting my mind to hunting and learning it more. So that's why this happened when I did that. I put my nose to the grindstone and I ended up learning a lot, a, a whole bunch. And I was like, you know what? It's been a long time, I've learned a lot, and I came to realize very quickly that there was no outlet on YouTube to teach people how to waterfowl hunt and give them tips or tricks just to help you progress faster. There was nothing like that really when I was learning how to waterfowl hunt. There were some videos on here like call tutorials, I, I, that's how I learned to call was YouTube. Uh, but there was nobody like me, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm really not tooting my own horn, there was nobody that catered to the beginner duck hunter and pumped out how-to videos and gave tips in the field on the hunts. So I was like, you know what, that sounds like an awesome idea, I'm going to pick up a camera and try this. And, and when I did, I absolutely fell in love with it. I uh, took the footage home, uh, just my GoPro, and I threw it on my computer and when I watched that footage I was like, Oh man, I think I can get really good at this. And that's what happened. I got really good with it. I've always been really good with a camera and a gun. So that's where we are today. Today, now we're sitting 2,000, 3,000 decoys, spreads, snow spreads, honker spreads. You know how it goes. It's gotten crazy and out of hand, let me tell you. But I thought that this video, just running through the history of how I got to where I'm at quickly, uh, there's a lot of details in there, you know what I mean. But I think just going over it and letting you guys understand that I wasn't blowing a goose call when I was 5. I wasn't sitting spreads when I was 10. Um, this is all stuff that I learned very, very quickly at an older age, in my teens, and then in my early 20s, and through my 20s, and now I'm 30. So I just wanted to make it relatable to where, yes, a lot of you might be younger or older. I know a lot of you are probably in your uh, 18 to 20 to 25 range there's always a lot to learn and and again that's why i started this youtube channel was if i learn something i'm gonna tell them right then when i learn it so i don't forget it and so they get that information i think i think that we've really built an outstanding community here something that i am extremely proud of i think it's uh something that i'm most proud of uh, of in my life it's one of my biggest accomplishments my family and my kids are my biggest of course but you guys in this YouTube channel, I can say that I don't think I could be any more proud of this and happy and thankful. And I know I'm getting into my feelings and it's getting a little weird, but we came back from Minnesota, y'all, and, and uh, Nate and, and his dad and everybody up there really treated us like gold. And I feel like it's just time to 
um, step outside the, the, the box, you know, it ain't all about just hunting and killing and stacking birds. Um, a lot of you are here because you do. You relate to what I do and what I say, how I say it. I sound just like you guys. I'm the normal guy. I'm not anything different than you guys, and I don't claim to be. I never will. I, uh, like I said, I don't want to make this 25 minutes long. Uh, I've been trying to keep the videos active. That's why we haven't been doing a lot of garage videos like this, because I like to be active. I want to bring you guys entertaining content. Uh, even if we're not hunting, I want to be going. I want to be somewhere. I want to be providing you guys good information on site, you know, wherever we're at. If we're teaching you how to blind a layout blind, if I'm teaching you how to blind an A-frame in a tree row, that's what I like to do. I like to get out and I like to teach you guys and show you, you know, on hand tutorial. So, if you guys like what's going on here, give me a big old thumbs up and I want you guys to let me know down below what you guys want to see. If there's any videos that you've been like, man, I just wish you'd do this or I just wish you'd do that, let me know down below. If it's waterfowl hunting related especially, let me know down below because I'm always open for new things. You know me, I've done some wild stuff this last year. So, don't be afraid to put it down there. Ho, ho, ho. Man, that, that heater, that fireplace got a little toasty, let me tell you. Boy, howdy us duck hunters. I know we're all out here welcoming this cool weather back. Good lord, it feels good. But I really thought that this would just be a video that you all would really enjoy. You guys get to hear my story and, and my coming up into the duck hunting world and how this all just happened, you know? Because honestly, in a million years, I never thought that the channel would be this big. I mean, I really want to do this with all my heart, but I never thought it'd be this successful. So thank you guys. Like I always say, without your help, this wouldn't exist. But I want to thank y'all for watching. Just remind you, the olive hoodie and the thermal waiter sweats are available. I'll put them down in the description below. Go pick them up if you want them. Anything you guys purchase on the Ducks website goes directly to supporting the channel. And it helps me bring you guys videos. Like I always say, I, I, I want to let you guys know that. Just to make sure you, you understand that these videos are free to you, but they do take time to make. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you for being here, guys. I truly appreciate it. Peace. Girls, weather Edmonton's a box. Come on, man. It ain't like I'm a slangin' on.